pardon is an exemption from punishment for a criminal conviction and cannot be reversed. Throughout history, presidents have granted pardons to criminals out of compassion or, in some cases, to restore peace and order. This was the case for one of the most controversial pardons in history. After President Nixon resigned from office following the Watergate scandal, Gerald Ford became the 38th President of the United States. He pardoned Nixon for his acts in the scandal and cover-up, which led to debate and ultimately was one of the contributing factors in Ford's loss in the 1980 presidential election. Gerald Ford was not the only president to grant controversial pardons. Bill Clinton, the 42nd president of the United States, has also been criticized for granting clemency to certain people. One such incident was on August 11, 1999, when President Clinton pardoned 16 FAL and nationalists from Puerto Rico who had been convicted of conspiracy to make bombs, commit robbery, and other criminal acts with their sentences ranging from 35 to 105 years in prison. The Senate voted to condemn this act overwhelmingly 95 to 2. One expert had this excuse for the highly debated pardons. Hillary's biggest problem running for the Senate was that she wasn't a New Yorker. And how is she going to appeal to the specific ethnic groups that make up the New York State electorate? So. In September 1999, right in the middle of her Senate campaign, she was approached by City Councilman Jose Rivera, who really is a spokesman for the Hispanic community in New York, who gave her a packet urging the pardoning of the FALN terrorists. And included in the packet was a letter to Hillary asking her to use her influence on her husband to get these pardons granted. And two days later, they were. Later on, in March 2000, President Clinton pardoned Ager and Vanna Jo Gregory, the owners of a carnival company. Supposedly, First Lady Hillary Clinton's younger brother, Tony Rodham, was friendly with the Gregories and had lobbied for their pardons. In October 2006, this was investigated by the Judicial Watch Group, who alleged that Tony Rodham had received over $100,000 in loans for helping the Gregories get pardoned. The most controversial pardons of all were granted on January 20, 2001, just hours before President Clinton left office, and were dubbed Pardon Gate by the press. First, Clinton pardoned his half-brother Roger Clinton Jr., who had been convicted of cocaine possession in 1985 and served one year in jail. Even though he had already served his sentence, this pardon cleared his record. However, one month after the pardon, he was convicted on drunk driving charges. He often used his connection to his brother for his financial gain, as he did in this 1990s advertisement for Comedy Central. Our great nation is known as the land of opportunity. Yet can we claim that title until every American has the chance for meaningful employment? Now, I have a job. I'm the presidential brother. But not everyone can do that. So I've come up with a plan. One, employers... Create some jobs. Two, workforce, find those jobs. Three, everyone watch Comedy Central. Once you have a job, you'll need something to take your mind off work. Thank you very much. Comedy Central, important enough to get... The pardon of Roger Clinton Jr. was much less controversial than that of Mark Rich. In 1983, Mark Rich was indicted for evading nearly $50 million in taxes. He was also charged with over 50 counts of tax fraud, and running illegal oil deals with Iran during the hostage crisis. However, he was in Switzerland when he was indicted and never returned to face the charges, which subsequently led to him being on the FBI's top 10 most wanted list for years. Right before Clinton left office, he granted a pardon to Rich, whose ex-wife had made large donations to Clinton's campaign and library. This led to speculation that Mark Rich's pardon had been bought and parodies on this idea were shown in TV shows such as The Simpsons. Rudy Giuliani, former New York City mayor and the attorney who prosecuted Mark Rich, had this to say about the pardon just days after it occurred. The pardon of Mark Rich is an outrage. I mean, there's no, there's no conceivable explanation of it that I can think of that has anything to do with decent law enforcement. One of the reasons I feel very upset about this is the president ex-president in doing what he did has demeaned the pardon process. Controversial donations to the Clinton Library included ones from Denise Rich as well as many large corporations. 
It was supposed that companies would donate to the Clinton Foundation towards his library in hopes that if Hillary was elected president, she would look kindly towards those companies and their wants. This created big controversy during the 2008 Democratic presidential primaries as many people wanted the list of donors released. Senator Clinton was asked a question about it by Tim Russert during a debate. I want to turn to uh, politics and money. Senator Clinton, as you well know, you had to turn back $850,000 in contributions from Norman Shue because of his uh, ch rather checkered past. Uh, again, President Clinton uh, said this. Now, we don't have to publish all our donors for the Clinton Foundation, but if Hillary became president, I think there would be questions about whether people would be trying to win favor by giving, giving money to me. In light of that, uh, would, do you believe that the Clinton Foundation and the Clinton Library should publish all the donors who give contributions to those two entities? Well, Tim, I actually co-sponsored uh, legislation uh, that would have sitting presidents uh, reveal any donation to their presidential uh, library, and uh, I think that's a good policy. And the foundation? Well, it would be the same because that's where the, the, uh, uh, the library comes from. Until such legislation, would they voluntarily, the Clinton Library and Clinton Foundation, make their donors public? Well, you'll have to ask them. What's your recommendation? Well, I don't talk about my private conversations with my husband, but I'm sure he'd be uh, happy to consider that. Frank Rich of the New York Times had this explanation for the controversial situation surrounding Hillary Clinton's campaign and her husband Bill's presidential library. There was a major change in the dynamic of this campaign beginning in South Carolina. Bill Clinton was introduced essentially as a co-president, and the Clinton campaign did this. It wasn't the press that did this. It was Bill Clinton himself who, even on the night of South Carolina, gave us a speech of his own on television before Hillary Clinton could give her uh, concession speech. Once that happens, a candidate who prides herself on being vetted and, and being vetted better than anyone else has to be revetted for this potential co-presidency. We have to look at uh, a lot of questions that haven't been answered, including the tax returns of both Clintons, including uh, the money uh, that's gone into Clinton charitable operations like the foundation. However worthy its, its uh, uh, intentions and some of its deeds, we know from some reporting that uh, business uh, people who might want favors before another Clinton administration have been giving money to the foundation, to the library, the rest of it. None of this was really that strongly vetted. There were the occasional stories here or there, including in my own paper. But at debates, there was more talk about uh, Obama's so-called plagiarism than there was about uh, the finances of the Clintons as they near towards the White House again. Although controversies such as this one have shadowed Bill Clinton's legacy, he had many triumphs during his presidency which have led to mixed feelings about his success as president.